live. Boom! What up, ladies and gents? Happy, what are we at, Tuesday? It's Tuesday. T -t 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 -tuesday. T -t 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 Tuesday. We're ready to rock and roll and teach you nine ways. Well, talk about nine ways t -t -t today, Junior. That's right. Let's hit it, Adam. Shut, Shut up, up and sit down. down. Business the Business Bros Podcast was created for you. Learn from the business professionals who come to share their stories. Find out what's working in business on social media, what's hot and what's not, straight from the mouths of successful entrepreneurs out there doing the real work. And now, welcome to another episode of Business Bros. What up, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Happy Tuesday. We are Whoop. midway through September. We we got we got yeah, two weeks left, and then we begin Q4, dude. Two weeks I left, and we know. begin Q4. Hey, That's you know, uh, before before we jump into the topic today, which I'm really excited about, how are you doing on your quarterly goals? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I'm uh, I didn't do my quarterlies. I've been doing weeklies, <gasps> and I did not do a qu a Q3. You goal. didn't do your. Quarterlies? I can tell you where I'm at. Oh my goodness. I know. I can tell you where I'm at for my annual goal. I am, a dude. My annual goals are actually lining up really, really well. Uh, the only thing is, I have a goal for creating some funnels. And I mm. haven't quite done that yet. Maybe that'll be my fourth quarter goal. But the there other go. two goals, dude, I'm like on the cusp of reaching. I'm so proud of myself for those. So, so it, these are these are my quarterly goals. Uh, make the orientation course available online with uh, comprehension exams. Get five sponsors for the Insurance Bro podcast. Uh, agent onboarding SOPs with CRM automation. Agent growth plan. Uh, which is the whole uh, 90 day massive action plan and marked improvement in our renewal process. So three out of five, I hit uh, for sure. The other two, uh, the renewal process, we'll see. And I think we're getting there. Um, and then the sponsors for the show. That's the toughie. That is a toughie, but uh, we're getting there. We, we have a, a great uh, automated process that we're working on to grow our audience via LinkedIn. So Heck we're tweaking yeah. and adjusting and making that stuff happen. And we are well on our way on that one. So it's kind of cool. Um, we've been developing our, our systems for a lot of different things, but lately we're focusing our attention on the marketing aspect of our mm -hmm. business. And that's a whole, that, you know, dude, I was, uh, so I've been doing the whole, um, me and 10 campaign, right? And so yesterday, I love that. It's it's awesome. It's if, for those of you who don't know, it comes from Matthew McConaughey's uh, speech where he talks about his hero is him in ten years. So I decided, you know what, that's going to be the movement that I'm going to be pushing on for myself because that's how I align myself, right? It helps me align my decisions on a daily basis. It's either helping me become the person I want to be in ten years, or it's not, right? That's how the decisions come to play. Matthew so McConaughey, doing, Tiger Woods. He came up with it too, or he did? He's no. About I it mean, too? he he didn't talk about um himself in ten years, but he always talked about never comparing himself to others, always just comparing himself to himself. Right, and and that's that's the key, right? Comparing yourself to yourself and who you want to be, not who I am today. Today's mm -hmm. decisions will shape who I become in the future. So hashtag me in ten. I started writing in my journal, and that's who I'm writing to. I'm writing to myself in ten years, and I was writing to myself describing a situation, and I was, you know, I was thinking to myself, holy crap! Like my daughter, I, I, in my in my journal, my daughter is gonna be. Uh, you know, she'll be 21. So she'll be, you know, finishing up college because she went to college because of because uh, sports. Right. And then my son, he didn't want to go to college, but he's working with me in CS Enterprises and it's our, our marketing firm. And we sit down and have fun and we stereotype the crap out of crap. And we uh, we really uh, target our markets and help build our, our real estate company and our insurance company. Uh, and like I'm like as as I'm writing these things down, as I'm writing who I'm going to become, it really focuses in on where I should be focusing my attention on, right? How much I want to do spend time with my kids, and how much I want them to do what they do, and I work to their strengths, and like all these different little things, right? And and I'm noticing my my reaction, and I'm going to be doing those on my Instagram. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Business Bros Pod. Uh, but at the same time, just like like lining myself up, and so if you guys have ever thought about who you want to become and who you want to be, join my, you know, me and 10 hashtag me and 10 M E I N the number 10. And, uh, let me know what's going on. You know, tag me at business bros pod. I want to see what you guys are planning to do in 10 years and just let's see how much power it's going to, it's going to build. If you do, if you build these little small habits, right, where you're focusing your attention on who you want to become and really keeping that as your North star on a daily basis, you're going to get to a level where you're just going to be proud of yourself. You're going to look back and be like, gosh, I've accomplished so much in such a little time just because of what I'm doing here. And that's the goal, right? That's, that's the goal. 
So uh, let's jump Constantly into our topic. Learning and improving. Let's jump into our topic. Hashtag me and 10. Here we go. Uh, we're going to be talking about nine ways to save time. Now, this uh, this nine ways to save time comes from Inc. Magazine. Kevin Dom is the author, and he put it in Inc. Magazine. So we're just going to use this as a... Uh, as the t as the nine points, and James and I are just gonna you know go back and forth. We have fun with uh, with our scripted outlined shows. It gives us a little ability to to kind of plan on a topic. All right, so here we go. Number one, do strategic planning. Oh, you know what? Before I even do the strategic planning, you guys know how many seconds there there are in a day. You know off the top of your head, Ham? Seconds in a day? No. Eighty six thousand four hundred. 86,400 86, and I, and, and I, and it's part of the article that's what reminded me, but, uh, but I remember, you know, somebody talking about, uh, you know, what if you only had $86,400, how would you spend that 86,400? You don't get any more. You only get that much money. How do you spend it? And once you, you know, really focus your attention on what you're going to spend it on, then it reflects back on time. Look at what you placed value on when you're buying that whatever you were buying with your 86,400. That's all you got. Where did you spend it? What did you do with it? And that kind of gives you an idea of how to prioritize things. And that comes to what point number one is, is do strategic planning, like really focus your attention on what you want to accomplish. James, you know, threw a little zinger at me, hit me with a left hook on my quarterly goals. I don't have my quarterly goals. I have my weeklies and then I had my annuallys and I didn't do a quarterly for whatever reason. But I still make sure that on a daily basis, I'm I'm intentful on what I'm doing for the day. I have my note, my my journal that I keep with me, and and I have my my affirmations. I have my gratitude, and I have my daily intention. I know what I need to accomplish on a daily basis. And here's the thing: I've I've tried to stay away from from uh, blocking my time as much. It doesn't work as well for me, even though that's going to be one of these things that you're that you're going to see in this strategy. For me, it comes down to completing a specific task. So when you're looking at your strategic planning, you want to make sure that you have certain things that you prioritize that are going to be part of your day. This is what I need to accomplish today. If I do this. And the rest of my day goes to crap, but I completed this. I'm going to feel good, mm -hmm. right? And there are certain things that you have on your list, on your priority list, and everything else comes up in life because most people are living life on a day-to-day -day basis or just on a minute-to-minute. -minute. Whatever happens, they're like a fart in the wind. They just blow them. They go in any direction, right? But the problem with that is when you have that thing that you were supposed to accomplish and this thing got in the way and this thing got in the way and this thing got in the way and you never got that thing done, it doesn't matter how many other small things you accomplish. You feel like you didn't get the thing done. You feel like you weren't uh, accomplished. You feel like nothing got done for that day. So having that priority and getting those things done, to me, that's that's probably the, the most important thing. Number two, or you have something Number, on that, Ham? Do no, strategic uh, well, planning. I mean, you me, talk about that all the time. Uh, for sure. For me, the strategic planning goes... Uh, we talked about your annual, uh, and, and beyond the annual is like a vivid vision. So some people will say, you know, you're, you're doing the me in 10, right? So really getting a good idea of visualizing what you want to, what you want your life to look like in 10 years. Uh, I'm doing, uh, just the vivid vision for, you know, three years out. And basically the strategic planning for me, uh, I take the first of every month, the first day of the month, whether it's no matter what day of the week it is, weekday, weekend, whatever. Uh, the first day of the month is a day where I don't focus on insurance work. I work it. I focus on my strategic planning work. So I, I surrender to your will. That's what <laughs> you, you do, right? Yeah. You focus your attention on that one thing. On that one thing, which is, and I have, I have, even then I have a, a list of 10 things that I do that are part of my strategic planning so that I know what my month ahead is supposed to look like. Uh, and, you know, I make sure that I have my goals set for the month and my goals for the month are serving my quarterly goals and my quarterly serving my annual and my annual serving my overall vivid vision. So um, strategic planning is huge. And especially uh, the, the weekly planning, by the way, comes from uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and having that plan at the beginning of the week and mapping out the one thing that you got to do every day that you focus on, that one project to get done every day. And again, it just marches you that much closer to those other larger goals. Number two, monitor your time. Right. So, uh, you know, have, for some people, having the time gap is the, is an important thing. For me, monitoring the time means 
living and dying by your calendar. If you have something that needs to get done at a certain time, put it in your calendar. If you're going to get on a 5 a.m. call, make sure it's on your calendar. If you're going to speak to you know, a particular client, make sure it's on the calendar. If you're going to follow up with somebody, make sure you put it on the calendar. Like make it, we, are, we are human. We forget things all the time. And if you have a checklist like that, your calendar is essentially your checklist. As you're going through your day, I completed that co- phone call. I followed up with that client. I uh, completed that task. Your check mark, you're measuring what you're doing on a daily basis. I had five activities I needed to get done today, and guess what? All five of them got done, or only three of them got done. It doesn't really matter the number that you complete. What matters is that you're able to measure out what you're doing, right? The fact that you have it on a schedule and you can check it off, now you can improve, right? You know where you messed up. James has been saying this for a while, and this is what we're focusing on for us in our marketing campaigns. What's he saying, James? If it can be measured, it can be improved. If it can be measured, it can be improved. That's really what it comes down to. So when we're putting together our marketing campaign, for example, for, for the Carrier Experience podcast, the, the the I mean, we're calling it for the podcast, but really it's for us to recruit insurance agents, to get insurance agents to come over and be Shh, part of our team. Anyone. Shh, shh, shh. Right? But- we know that that's the end goal. So we're using specific metrics. How many people are we reaching out to on a daily basis? Of those, how many of them do we gain interest? Of those, how many of them are we booking uh, on the show? Of those, how many are we on follow-up calls with? Of those, how many of them can we can we get to become part of our team? Like every single part of our marketing plan is going to be is going to have these kind of metrics involved. So we know how much we're spending, how much time we're spending with them at the same time, how much money are we uh, does it take for us to acquire a new agent, right? What's the cost associated if we can be measured, it can be improved. Right? Now I'm going to take this one a slightly different direction. So one thing is absolutely measuring your time and and keeping certain things to you know whatever limits that you want to set. Maybe you're monitoring how much time you spend on Facebook, and you want to limit that. You know, even even if it's part of your marketing strategy, we all get distracted and we start going into diving into all the the rabbit holes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one thing is monitoring and watching the time that you spend. The other one that kind of goes along with it is, are you working in your business or on your business? So the tasks Mm -hmm. that you do throughout your day, monitoring those tasks and saying, is it a in my business activity or on my business activity. And again, it's just a matter of measuring. So if you want to be a business owner, not self-employed, work more on your business than in your business. Boom. I like that. All right. Number three, prioritize your day. Like, okay, I know there are a lot of things that come up in a daily basis. I have two kids. So part of my day I know is going to go towards things like soccer practice or making breakfast for my kids or, you know, or spending time with a wife. You know, these things are part of the priority for your day. And I'm not saying don't do them. I'm not saying do them at a specific time. Make that make the time that that is necessary for those things to happen. But those are part of my priority, right? They I, I love being able to make breakfast for my kids right now during this COVID time and distant learning. I love the fact that I can go downstairs and say, hey, what do you want for breakfast? And then I go and make it. And then they come, they eat breakfast and they're ready to go on their day. I love that part, right? That's that's really cool. The fact that I can take my kid to to her soccer practice, for example, and then you know sit down and and she's playing soccer and I can hop on my laptop to do whatever I need to do. You know, those are those are different times in my day that I'm prioritizing so I can make sure that I'm there to take her to practice. And then in your business, right? There's certain things like we were talking about what that you need to get done on a regular basis. What are those things that you need to get done? Prioritize them. There should be, you know, there there are five dollar dollar productive activities that you can be doing in your day, and make sure when you're creating your list, which we're going to be talking about, you know, making a to do list. When you're creating your list, not only do you do you write out the things that you want to do, but you prioritize which ones are going to get done first, which ones need to get done and and go out and swallow that frog, right? There are certain things in your business that are not dollar productive that you find yourself doing a lot and comprising uh, most of your day doing those types of activities. Things like working on your website or things like, you know, working on your logo or creating a flyer or whatever it is. Those are not bad things. Those are not, you know, horrible things to be doing, but they're not some of your dollar productive activities. And at the end of the day, if you're not generate, if you're not generating a lead, if you're not following up with that lead, if you're not uh, nego- or I'm sorry, presenting or negotiating or closing, 
If you're not doing those things on a daily basis, your day is going to get by you. You're not going to feel accomplished. You, you skip one day, no big deal. You skip a week, all of a sudden, that's a nice chunk of paycheck. You skip a month, it starts to add up, right? So prioritize mm -hmm. your day. There are activities. It comes a streak that, and you develop new habits. Exactly. So prioritize your day. doesn't necessarily have to be uh, you know, a, a certain order every single time, but there are certain activities that you are trying to not do. And chances are those are the activities that get you the biggest results. So make sure you have a priority on the things that you do. You want to add to that at all? Nope, not so much. Just uh, thank you to Jason. You rocking on. Boom, boom. Boom. All right. Number four, time your phone calls. James, I, I wanted you to share uh, about Gong. You talked about this today in uh, at the Carrier Experience. You know, what about these phone calls? What, what makes sense when you're talking to people about, you know, keeping track of the time that you're talking? Yeah. So, um, I mean, the, I think that the point of this one is a little bit different. I'm not totally sure. Um, but the gong app is something that tracks how much you as the presenter, as the salesperson is talking during the phone call, as opposed to how much the person that you're presenting to is talking. And so what this does for you is it allows you to track and measure, uh, if you are talking 70% of the time, what is your close ratio as opposed to when you talk 90% of the time, what's your close ratio? So in some instances, it might show, you know, depending on what your product is, you might be talking the majority of the time. You might be talking 90% of the time. But what if you bring it down to 80? Will it improve or hurt your sales ratio? What does it do? So Gong is awesome because it, it actually tracks how much time you're speaking versus how much your customer is speaking. So, you know, and another way to look at this, uh, you know, time your phone calls type thing, this is something where you're pre, where you're doing it ahead of time. So I know that there, there are some people that I hop on the phone and I could talk with them for hours, right? So, you know, Anthony, for example, Anthony uh, Ramirez is, is one of the lenders that I work with and, and him and I go on these tangents on, you know, COVID conspiracy theories and, you know, all, all you know, adrenochrome, all kinds of crazy, you know, they're, they're rabbit holes. You can go in these things forever. So when Anthony and I get on the phone, usually I get on the phone with him towards the end of the day where it's okay that we talk for an hour about stuff that's that's crazy and, and obtuse. But in the middle of the day, right, in the prime parts of my day, there's no way I could do that. That is not the golden time for me to be talking about conspiracy theories. During the day, <laughs> that's the golden hour for me to be making prospecting calls or for me to be talking to uh, negotiating on terms or talking to real estate agents or talking to clients, whatever that is. So if somebody calls that, you know, you can go down a rabbit hole, what we're talking about here is be intentful at the beginning and, and start at the beginning. Hey dude, check it out. I got like 10 minutes. So, you know, let, let's, uh, you know, let's chop it up, but I only got like 10 minutes and I got to get on another call. And, and that way, you know, up front and both of you are going to be respectful for time, mm -hmm. right? Both, both, you know, how much time you have on the phone, but you also let the other person know so that, you know, if they want to come in, you know, like shoot the shit or whatever, they're going to talk to you for 10 minutes and then it's okay. You got to go. They already know ahead of time that, Hey, my time's up. I got to get going. Or if they have something that where they need to get to the point right away, now you've put that emphasis. Now they don't have to, you know, beat around the bush and the conversation and get to know stuff. They're just going to go straight to the point and and respect your time and get that that uh, point uh, squared away, right? So you know, timing your phone calls. One thing is what James talked about: understanding what you're doing while you're on the phone. The other thing is understanding who you're talking to and where these conversations are going to go. Now, if you're talking to a prospective client and, you know, that conversation goes an hour, but it turns into a, a, a transaction or a deal or whatever it is, a lead, whatever it's going to be, then that's yep. a good, that's a good time for your call, right? That's part of your golden hours. Uh, but if it's not that kind of I spent of call, an hour talking to a potential referral partner. And if we wind up referring each other business and that was an hour well spent. It's an hour well spent, right? But that's what that hour was intended for. I saw it on the calendar. It was on the calendar for you to talk to him. I thought I was going to hop on the phone there with you too, but <laughs> I saw it on the calendar and you, it's easy for me to see, okay, that's the next step, right? I, same thing. Uh, I, I met with, uh, with Kristen Hutchins and she's, uh, I helped her set up her podcast. Yeah. And yeah. So we sat down and that was an hour the call. Comedian. Too. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's, she's a lot of stuff. Bartender, comedian, mom, wife. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Um, but we, we helped set up her podcast. So I helped set her, set up her podcast. So this was an hour conversation and we talked a lot about a bunch of different things, but the agenda was there, right? The agenda was to get her stream yard set up, to get all her assets put into place, to get her operational so that we can go on to our next meeting when we set up some more things. But again, that was one hour and that was allocated to do that thing. Time your phone calls, make sure you're, 
you're allocating the proper time for the proper calls at the right time of day. That's important. And by the way, this was actually, this was Alex Greenwood from uh, PR After Hours. Uh, he was on the on the show before and he says he needed to hear this. He's a little too, too chatty sometimes. Oh, you know, it's something about that microphone that we get in that. that <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know what it is, Alex. Don't worry. We're, we're both in the same boat here. A little, a little chatty, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, I just like, like smart people. And it's fun yep. to talk. <laughs> It's true, man. It's true. I think I just like to hear my own voice. I used to say I didn't like to hear my own voice, but I think I like to hear my own voice now. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> All right. Number five, make a daily to-do list. Right now, for me, I don't know about you, James, but for me, making a to-do list is is almost like a shopping list. Like, here are the things I want to do. And this is we, we talked a little bit about this when we were prioritizing the day, right? When we were prioritizing the day, it was more like these are the activities that I need to get done for the day. And then here we go. Uh, you know, let's prioritize. Let's put them in order. A to-do mm -hmm. list is just all the things that need to get done. So for me, I always have my, my journal right here next to me. And when I think of something, I just write it down. I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. And it's nice. just a long laundry list. It's kind of like a grocery list. These are all the things that you, that need to happen. Kind of like a honeydew list, right? If you don't think you have anything to do, ask your wife. I'm pretty sure she has a list of things for you to do. So, uh, or spouse, right? And I'm sure there's a list of things for you to do or that you oh, haven't yeah, mine, done mine too, right here. Yep. That's how it works, right? But have that list because what happens is once you have that list, then you can go into that step of prioritizing what goes first, what goes second, what goes third, and those, and then have that order. But if you ever have one of those days where you complete everything on your list and you feel like you're lost and there's nothing to do, that's okay because you got a long laundry list of things to do, right? So it's right. okay to be adding things, but it's also okay to be scratching things off the list. And it feels really good to Heck scratch yeah. things off the list, to give that check mark, to highlight it, to make it go away. I already did it. I completed it. That is amazing to do. It just feels good to check those things off the list. What about you? So how's your, how's your to-do list going? My to-do list is uh, part of my weekly planner. Also, like at the very bottom, there's a little section for me to add all of my, uh, all of my to-do items, all of my weekly to-do items. Um, and part of my monthly routine on the first of the month is to comb through that list. So it'll get super long, like we're talking about. Uh, and on the first of the month, I go through that list and I, I do one of the three D's, right? Delete, defer, or delegate. Boom. One and of those for me, for me, it's do it, delete it, or delegate it. One of do those it, three. Delete it, delegate it. Delete, defer, delegate. I mean, um, yeah, or it, it, hopefully it's done really, but, uh, <laughs> but it's like, okay, well it's, it's not done yet. So I got to, you know, stay on it, stay it's on one it. of those things. Yeah. And, and, you know, I do that same process by the way, for my emails, like it, it's either I do it, I delete it or I, or I delegate it. Right. Or I, I forward it essentially. And what I hate to have is those, is those bolded emails that I haven't checked sitting in my inbox. I try to keep it under 10. It's usually, and I have a couple bolded that I know I need to get to that I haven't gotten to in like mm -hmm. a year, but these are things that I know I need to get to at some point. I know that. Right? I know that feeling. And, and th those are lower ones. Everything else above that needs to be needs to be done and it needs to get out of my inbox as soon as possible, whether it's filed away or whether it goes somewhere. Go Navy. Right? Go Navy. <laughs> uh, but it's got to get done. So those are, oh, yeah. those, are, those are the things that I got to make sure that go on my list. All right, number six. Now this one is to me super important. Get a good night's sleep. You want to save yourself time the next day and stress? You want to worry about, you know, you, you want to not have to worry about what's going to happen the next day? Do you have enough energy? Or are you going to get along with people? Get a good night's sleep. And part of getting a good night's sleep is honestly going to bed on time. There are, you know, who is it? Um, I have, I have uh, a new, uh, so my morning routine has been awesome. Sorry to interrupt you, but cool. my morning routine has been awesome. Uh, 440 getting up, doing the 5 a.m. call with the Justice League, stretching during that time. And then like I have my whole morning planned out through till, you know, frankly, I have my whole day planned out. I'm like super time blocked. It's disgusting. But at night, I just had like a six to 10 block of dinner, quality time with, you know, the wife or whoever and visit, uh, you know, Danny's kids, junto meetings, like whatever. Like it was just a six to 10 block. But I, ch I switched it up. I made it six to nine thirty. And at nine thirty, it's my electronics shut off hour. Ooh. So See, and that's that's a key thing. So um, Mark Wahlberg. 
uh, you know, uh, Marky Marky Mark. Mark. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. So uh, I, I read somewhere or heard an audio or something somewhere that he gets up at three o'clock in the morning, starts his day at three o'clock in the morning. But he's in bed. He's in bed by like seven. And when they asked him why, he's like, what are you doing from seven to, to like midnight anyways? What are you doing? Like you're probably watching Netflix. You're probably doing nothing, probably messing around, watching TV, wasting your time. He's like, why do I need to be awake when I'm wasting that time? Now, I'm not saying go to that extreme. I'm not that extreme myself personally right that's just not me but understanding what times you are wasting and what times you are using right because let's face it what you just described there where you have six to ten is your is your family time essentially right that's wife mm-hmm. time that's katie time that's whatever that's that's your time that's there right and you're in bed by 10 o'clock that's the whole point right so you get your six hours sleep me- enough to get you to the next day some of you are going to need more than six hours sleep some of you need that seven eight hour beauty sleep and that's cool so make sure that you're 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 productive some of you some of you are are not going to bed at nine you're barely starting your work because it's your side hustle time like at six or seven o'clock in the evening and you're working till midnight and that's fine just make sure that you allocate enough time to get sleep the wor- our bodies just need it. Our mind literally is like re- like rejuvenating when we're sleeping. Our body needs the sleep. Alex is saying eight and a half hours of sleep is what he needs. You'll know. Ooh. You'll know how, how you operate. Here's the here's the other side about getting enough sleep. If you have an exercise regimen and you're working out on a regular basis, at the beginning it sucks. You're going to be more tired. But once you're about two or three weeks in, you actually have more energy with the less amount of sleep that you need. So Right now, I'm at the point where I'm going to bed about 9, 9.30. I'm trying to be in bed by like 9.30, and I'm up at 4.20 every morning, right? So I'm close to that seven-hour marker. I'm, I know that if I get a good seven hours of sleep, I'm going to be solid for my day. Six hours, I can push. I can do six hours of sleep, but I know it's not. I'm not as effective. I'm yawning a little more. I don't have enough, as much energy. Seven hours is my magic number. You have a magic number. Some of you are are fully functional on five hours sleep, six hours sleep, and you're great. You're perfect. You're good to go. Congratulations. Now allocate your day based on your most productive times and sleep during your least productive times. And I'm just going to throw this out there. It's okay if nine hours is what you need or uh, like Alex is saying, eight and a half hours. That's fine. Like you don't have to be the type of person like me. I'm, I'm around six to six and a half hours is, is pretty good for me. Um, on you know my monday through friday but trust me on the weekends it's like eight to ten um but you know (laughs) same i'm in the same Um, way but yeah if if you need eight eight and a half nine hours of sleep every night to feel rested and feel good the next day get those hours because you're gonna be more productive you will be more productive Right? And that's that's the key. The key is not, you know, that you're sleeping so many. It's what are you doing with the time that you're awake? Remember, 86,400 seconds, right? So if you're sleeping some away, that's great. What are you doing with the ones that you're awake? And that's the that's what our main emphasis for today's show is, is all about, right? Making sure you, you save the time that you need. All right, number seven, make your meals a social event. Now, I love this one, right? So, you know, family time is family time and it tends to be during dinner for us and for and and during breakfast because those are the times I really sit down and and hang out together and eat. And that's cool. That's quality time. That's where the conversation happens. Now, you can do that in your business as well. Less now with COVID, right? But still, you can meet somebody for lunch, have lunch together, and make it a make it a eat and a meeting at the same time. Or do the same thing on Zoom. Hey, we're gonna have a lunch and learn. And here's here's what we're gonna do during lunchtime. We're gonna learn about this particular thing or a presentation or whatever it's gonna be. If you make your meal a social event, you're you're killing two birds with one stone. Unless you're eating chicken, then you probably killed it with something else. But it didn't. Didn't. Right. Dad joke. But, but the point is you can use that meal time. You don't have to eat by yourself in the corner of the auditorium anymore. Use that time. That That's extra time, right? No extra time is what Tony Robbins talks about. Net time, no extra time. Use that effectively. When I run in the mornings, I'm listening to my audiobook at the same time. I'm, I'm doing two things at the same time. I'm trying to utilize. And I'm not saying multitasking. Multitasking is not really a thing where your attention is focused on one thing. That's really all your mind can handle is the attention on the one thing. But you can chew gum and walk at the same time. You can eat and listen while somebody else is talking in between that. Those things can happen. I mean, you I can hope watch, you're listening because. Right. You can listen to an audio book while you run or a podcast while you run. So make use of those times. If you make your meals a social event going to be better for you You're and if we can get back people. to those pre-covid times when you were dedicated to eating lunch with somebody every day 
Yeah, that was a good time, right? Yeah. And, and it, I mean, it got to the point where we're doing it on a on our podcast now. We're meeting someone every day, but that was the intention: is to meet someone new every day. All right, number eight: choose your companions carefully. Look, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got a lot of friends, and I got a lot of friends in that are places. that are in low places, and I got a lot of friends that are happy where they're at. They're just not. They decided that they're happy where they are, and that's great for them. I'm happy, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. if you're trying to advance, those are probably not the best people to be spending a lot of your time with. I'm not saying dump your friends, right? I'm just saying where you spend your time tends to be where you're going to become, right? That's who you're going to end up like. So spend your time with people that are achieving or 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 at the level that you want to be at the best you can and those things can be in books those things can be in podcasts those things can be in youtube videos they don't necessarily have to be the person themselves in front of you hanging out having lunch it's still you're still able to learn from them if you surround yourself with those kind of like-minded people 100 percent. surround yourself with people that are going to push you to be better exactly all right last one because i know we're running low on time right yeah, it's cool. We're running low on time, but last one, give yourself 30 dedicated minutes each day. Now, these this is time that belongs to you, right? This is where you get to do whatever it is that you want because if you work the whole time, if you just burn out, if you if you just stick to that every single day. So make sure you give yourself some time. Now, it has to be at least 30 minutes, right? Doesn't doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. have to be more than that, doesn't necessarily have to be less than that. But if you take 30 minutes to, you know, watch some TV or to wind down, take a bath, you know, relax, give yourself that time that you need. It's it's great for your mind to recharge. Unplug I would, yourself from a particular situation. I would like, call this uh, the meditation time. Honestly, if it's me, this would be the meditation time of just giving yourself 30 minutes to clear it out and just restart, you know, just just get yourself into that mindset. And uh, it can be something that you do at night, the 930 electronic shutoff that I'm telling you about. Um, I want to meditate and journal that at that time or read, like actually read a book. But either way, like my my phone uh goes away my my tv gets turned off etc uh but that 30 minutes it's it's your time to do things that that are going to serve you serve your soul Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amen brother as jace as uh as alex said amen but that's the truth dude you you it's your life Right. And, and, and I understand our, our number one rule in business is to be of service to others. I understand that, but I'll be 100% honest with you. There is a lot of selfish factors that go into giving joy is what you will feel if you give of yourself truly and joy feels really good. So I'm asking you to be selfish. Enjoy that feeling by giving of yourself most of the day, but understand that some of that day you got to give to yourself. 100%. You got to be there to to recharge your mind. You got to be there to get to help yourself get to the next level. Otherwise, again, you're going to burn out and it's going to be over and we don't want that from you. We want you to have some fun on a on a regular basis. Boom. Alex, thank you for joining us on the program. All the commentary always a always a pleasure cuz it's a, it makes the it makes the show just that much funner. Funner is not a word I know, but I am owning it. I am Boom. owning it. He said it. You said it. Boom. Boom. All right, ladies and gents, that's all we got for you guys today. Peace. Bye-bye. And we're out. Thank you for listening to the Business Bros Podcast. Are you looking to get more clients or to increase your income? Hernan, the Business Bro, can help you generate referrals through the power of podcasting. And James, the Insurance Bro with Pipeline Insurance, can help you effectively add insurance to your existing business. If you are ready to create wealth today and generational wealth for tomorrow, email businessbros at csfirst.com to schedule a free consultation or join the Business Bros Network, www.businessbros.biz.